In the realm of documentary photography, one name stands out as a trailblazer of a new style that blended immersion and intimacy with a powerful social conscience. Danny Lyon, one of the most original and influential photographers of the post-war generation, helped to forge a path known as new journalism, a groundbreaking personal form of documentary storytelling that would reshape the genre. Lyon's work blurs the boundaries between traditional documentation and artistic expression, influencing subsequent generations of visual storytellers. His photographs also serve as historical records, offering insights into moments of social change and activism. So for these reasons, let's shine the spotlight onto Danny Lyon. Born on March 16, 1942, in Brooklyn, New York, Danny Lyon's journey into the world of photography was marked by a dedication to capturing the truth hidden beneath the surface. Lyon's intellectual curiosity led him to the University of Chicago, where he was a classmate of Bernie Sanders, and where he honed his skills while studying history and philosophy. Lyon studied documentary photographs of the Civil War while admiring the work of James Agee and Walker Evans, such as their 1941 book, Let Us Now Praise Famous Men. In 1962, even before he had graduated, Lyon traveled to Albany, Georgia to photograph civil rights demonstrations. At the age of 21, he joined the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, and he worked the front lines with activists Julian Bond and John Lewis, and he was jailed alongside Martin Luther King Jr. Lyon's extraordinary civil rights images show the courage and integrity that became the hallmarks of his early work as he waded into tense encounters with burly Southern police officers and angry Mississippi mobs. Lyon's images are intimate yet analytical, capturing friends as protesters and institutional oppression makers such as segregated fountains, guards at voting centers, and posters urging African American maids to leave the South. One 1964 photo shows Stokely Carmichael, the chairman of the SNCC, facing a bayonet-wielding guardsman. Another captures SNCC photographer Clifford Vaughs viciously dragged away by gas mask wearing police officers. These daring frontline images act as potent insider accounts. Lyon's SNCC work culminated in the 1964 book The Movement, Documentary of a Struggle for Equality a mass-market paperback from Simon & Schuster. Defying the prevailing options for post-war journalistic photographers such as Life Magazine's hollow objectivity and Edward Steichen's sentimentalized global approach seen in The Family of Man, Lyon forged a bold, subjective style of participatory documentary photography. This new documentary approach pioneered alongside photographers like Bill Burke, Larry Clark, and Mary Ellen Mark was more than a stylistic shift. It rewrote the method. Lyon infiltrated the lives of marginalized individuals, workers, and outlaws, giving voice to those shunned due to class, race, or gender. Rather than an heir to traditional observers like Walker Evans and Robert Frank, Lyon aligns with new journalism's unconventional narrative techniques, akin to Truman Capote's In Cold Blood or Hunter S. Tompkins' Hell's Angels. Like these writers, Lyon embraced subjective reporting, engaging deeply with his subjects, privileging biased truth over facts, and culminating in unique montage-style books. Returning to Chicago in 1963, armed with a Nikon, a Roliflex, and a portable tape recorder, Danny Lyon embedded himself with the Chicago Outlaws Motorcycle Club. Lyon's motorcycling passion began in college, racing around the University of Chicago's Circle Drive. He soon attended races with his camera, eventually joining the Chicago Outlaws. He began making photographs with the goal to, quote, record and glorify the life of the American bike rider. During that era, as groups like the Hells Angels garnered attention for their law-breaking and vigilante pursuits, 
motorcycle enthusiasts evoked a paradoxical blend of fear due to their rebellion and fascination for their self-reliance. After four years documenting the outlaws, Lyon produced The Bike Riders, which has since been called one of the defining photo books of the 1960s. The dust jacket of the book calls it a tough, live-action close-up of a fast-moving, far-rambling world of the big bikes and those who like them. The themes contained within the pages range from death, fights, women, guns, booze, drugs, and, of course, motorcycles. According to author and photographer Martin Parr, the bike riders represented a significant step in 1960s American photography, not only launching an important photographic career, but also giving a younger generation of photographers a spokesman of their own age. Lyon was part of the generation he was photographing, so he was able to talk with an authentic voice about his subjects, understanding instinctively not only their hopes and aspirations, but also why they were rebelling against all kinds of adult authority. Through realism, romance, and a fusion of images and words, the book etched this area of counterculture into American memory, and would ultimately inspire the revolutionary film Easy Rider. His pivot from documenting African-American activism to a group of disenfranchised white individuals adorned with symbols like iron crosses and Nazi emblems might cause some head tilts today. However, Lyon, a romantic at heart, saw this as a form of political dissent. He believed that his connection with these societal outliers lent them legitimacy and lent viewers a lens into their unique defiance. 1967 found him in New York City, immersed for half a year in documenting the demolition of 19th century structures in Lower Manhattan. Subsequently, he delved into a starkly different world, spending 14 months among toughened convicts and death row inmates in the East Texas prison system. In 1971, Lyon unveiled what some believe to be his masterpiece, Conversations with the Dead. This project delved into the heart-wrenching reality of the American prison system. His photographs were a powerful juxtaposition with texts from prison records, inmate interviews, and even the writings of those imprisoned. As Lyon says in the book, I simply did not believe I could convey the reality of the prisons through my own writing alone. I wanted to drag the reader in with me. I wanted to put the reader through what I was experiencing emotionally. I wanted it to be real, and I became convinced the best way to do that was to use these documents and count on the basic humanity of my readers to respond. With an uncanny ability to wholeheartedly immerse himself in his projects, Danny Lyon formed deep connections with many of the men within the Texas penal system during his photographic endeavor. However, it is the intricate tapestry of drawings, letters, and the testimony of one inmate named Billy McCune that commands as much attention in conversations with the dead as Lyon's own poignant photography. In the narrative of McCune, Lyon found a protagonist whose story carried a distinct sadness. Accused of the rape of a woman in a Fort Worth car park, McCune faced conviction and a death sentence. Within the pages of Conversations with the Dead, McCune's letters, accompanied by his intricate drawings and paintings tailored for Danny Lyon, saturate the narrative. Through this haunting medium, readers are granted a glimpse into the harsh realities of life behind bars in 1960s America. The corridors of confinement are painted with shades of brutality, hopelessness, and a pervasive sense of desolation. During a time when people received long prison sentences for minor offenses like using cannabis or being in same-sex relationships, the harsh reality of life inside the prison becomes very clear. Danny Lyon later had this to say about the book. Billy's story was by far the most distressing and was the most difficult for me to deal with. If back in 1968 I thought I could bring down the mighty walls of the Texas prison system by publishing Conversations with the Dead and the work of Billy McCune, then those years of work are among the greatest failures of my life. In Texas, I photographed a world of over 12,500 men and women. Within a generation, that number exploded to over 200,000. Much has changed in America since I drove from New York City to Texas to make this book.
Danny Lyon's legacy stands as a testament to the power of visual storytelling to challenge norms, to provoke thought, and to ignite change. His lens was not just a tool, but a vehicle for empathy, allowing viewers to connect with the subject in profound ways. His artistry went beyond the surface, delving into the complexities of human existence and societal structures. Whether documenting civil rights demonstrations or motorcycle gangs or the prison system, his images unveiled the hidden corners of society, reminding us of the humanity that exists within even the most marginalized. As Lyon's work continues to inspire new generations of photographers and storytellers, his approach serves as a guidepost for authentic engagement and fearless representation. In an age of image saturation, Lyon's legacy calls upon us not to just observe, but to immerse ourselves in the stories we tell, to seek out the untold narratives, and to let our work stand as a testimony to the lives we encounter. Just as he aimed to put faces on movements, shine light on darkness, and make the movement move, we too can pick up his mantle using our lenses to reveal truth and amplify voices that might otherwise remain unheard. Danny Lyon's journey from the civil rights era to the streets of New York and the confines of prisons offers us an enduring lesson. The power of art lies not only in its visual impact, but in its capacity to provoke thought, to inspire empathy, and ultimately provoke change. The evolution of his work, the risks he took, and the stories he unearthed remind us that a photograph can transcend its frame and become a catalyst for understanding, compassion, and ultimately a call to action. Through his lens, Danny Lyon left an indelible mark on the world of photography, challenging us all to view the world with a different kind of focus, one that seeks truth, embraces diversity, and advocates for justice. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this presentation on the work of Danny Lyon. Uh, his images and his new journalism approach to photo making really inspired me this month, and I'm glad I got to share some of that with you all. That being said, if you enjoy this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when new episodes like this one are released. And also don't forget to head into the comments to let me know what photographers you think I should cover next in this series. As always, we're going to leave this video off with some more work by Danny Lyon, and I'll see you all next time.